Hi, I'm Bob Wormsley from Insidium and I've got some exciting news for you. The new X Particles public release is almost here. Packed full of new amazing features and improvements, this will be a free upgrade to anyone with an up-to-date maintenance agreement. So if you haven't renewed, now's the time to do it. So let's have a look at some of the new features. There are two new dynamic fluid objects to help create these incredible splashes. They are the XP Splash and our amazing new XP Sheeter. Let's see how they work. In this scene we have a torus and this torus is emitting some particles on frame one. Let's just make that torus invisible and they're falling to the ground with a gravity and we've got a fluid FX fluid solver in our scene. So these particles will be behaving in a fluid like way. So let's look at our new objects. If we go to the dynamics folder, we can go to the new object X P splash let's bring it into our scene and see what happens so straight away we can see we've got this velocity field in the shape of a cone and it's making our particles splash outwards loads of controls on this which we'll get to in a minute so it's not really looking much like a fluid splash because we've got all of these big gaps in our cone and what we really would like is all of these holes to be filled in with a thin sheet of particles so that's where our other new fluid object comes in let's go to the dynamics menu and we have xp sheeter so this works like magic so what we will do is hit play and we haven't got much difference we've got our velocity field splash but we've also got these big gaps between particles so let's go to our sheeter settings and what we need to do is increase the maximum density that it's looking for before it starts to fill in these gaps so if i just slowly start creeping this up ah we can see that we're starting to get additional particles being born let's go a bit higher and now we've got some really interesting tendrils being born but let's just say we want a big nice long kind of continuous thin sheet well just for now i'm going to switch off velocity alignment which i'll explain in a little while so let's switch that off and see what happens it's slowed down a bit because it's creating loads more particles and now you can see we have it it is completely filled in those gaps so we have this thin sheet of particles going out in the direction of our xp splash so let's have a look at the settings with um, the sheeter as it is so what we have got is a number of handles to this interface and if i reduce the amount of handles you can see what happens we get more and more controls with more handles fewer controls with fewer handles let's just put that down to six so each handle this is a handle here and it can be moved in the x y and z it also has a Bezier control to change the curve of the cone. And each handle also has, so here's our handle, it also has a power control. So let's just take those and let's reduce the power of all but one of these handles. So we'll stick them all down to almost no power. And now hit play and let's see what happens. So now we only get one tendril splash going in this direction. Let's reduce the top radius so they're flying upwards more. And there we're getting a splash. So let's increase the power of a second handle. And now we're getting two splashes. Let's try this handle. And you see we've got ultimate control about when and where this splash happens now at the moment it is forcefully forcing these particles in a 30 frame duration so what we could do is we could reduce that down let's say we want it to start blasting them on frame three but only last for a couple of frames so now we're getting a very different spurt of a splash let's increase the power of that handle and there it goes and we can make as many adjustments as we want to the bottom and to the top radius to the strength of this splash and we also have fall off values which can change the way in which the power happens along the length and the distance of this modifier 
So let's just bring that back and increase the power of those handles and this will be the starting point of our crown splash and we could maybe increase that overall strength a little bit. So there we are, we will leave our crown splash settings at that. Now let's dive back into the sheeter and explore some of the additional settings we've got to art direct this splash. So here we have a basic setup. Let's introduce some more tendrils to this. So what we can do, velocity alignment is good for that. We'll click velocity alignment. What it's doing, it's looking at the particles and if they're moving away from each other at an angle less than what we set here, then they will sheet. So at 82 degrees, it's not gonna make much difference. But if we bring that down to say 47, we're starting to get more tendrils because not every single particle is considered ripe for sheeting. And just by doing that, you can see we've got a much more interesting splash that has happened. So let's just put that straight back up again. Another way that we can art direct this, we can create some holes in this by saying that not all particles can be sheeted. Let's reduce the max fluid density and see if that will give us the holes we'd like. And there we have got some holes in our sheet because not all particles moving away from each other are being considered for sheeting because they have too great a density value. So that's giving us a nice organic look. We'll put that density back up. Another way of adding holes would be to manipulate the max hole and min hole sizes. So let's just bring the min hole size up and the max down a little. And now we should start getting some nice holes in our mesh. There we go, we've got some holes. Let's reduce that even further. And we've got lots more holes. Now that's a very interesting look. Look at those tendrils, that's, that looks fantastic. We can also, let's just put that back up again so we've got more of our sheet back. We're also able to manipulate the speed. Now at the moment we have max speed set to 500, so it's saying that any particles moving under 500 centimeters a second will be considered for sheeting. But let's just put that up to 1000 and activate relative speed. And now we can say only particles moving over 206 centimeters and under 360 centimeters will be considered for sheeting. And now we have a much more kind of sparse sheet. Let's reduce that minimum threshold and we'll have more and now we've got a much more interesting shape. We can also check age and this says that it will only sheet the original particles if they're under 20 frames old and we've got a bit of variation there as well. And let's, in fact let's just reduce that down to say 5 with a variation of 5 and now it's only sheeting right at the very beginning of this sim increase that a little bit so as you can see we can manipulate all of these various settings uh, with combinations of all of them to art direct and get exactly the splash that you require the sheeter of course doesn't have to be used with the splash it can be used in any fluid scene so here we have these fluid particles banging against this sphere let's say we want to make a nice sheet as they impact so let's activate our sheeter Resim, and we're going to get, as we expect, this really nice thin sheet of particles. But let's just say it's a little bit too uniform for us at the moment. We want to make this look a little bit more interesting. We'd like some more tendrils in that splash. So let's go to the sheeter settings, and what I'm going to do is activate some velocity alignment. And this means that particles moving away from each other will only sheet if they're moving away under this angle threshold. So that should now give us a few tendrils. There we go. As that wraps around that sphere and moves along, that's looking like a much more interesting splash. Very nice. So what more can we do to control these particles? Well, if we introduce particle groups, we've got even more control. So in this scene, if you look at my object manager, I have particle group one, which I'm going to activate. And this is going to be our birth particles. They're going to be green, the original particles. But then I'm going to activate particle group two, which are these purple ones. And in my sheeter, I'm going to drag in particle group two into the group window. And this now means that the birth particles will be green and the sheeter created particles will be the purple color. And this is an excellent way of seeing exactly how your simulation is working. Look how hard that sheeter object is working to create all of these filled in particles.
And now we have groups set up, we're able to use X particles modifiers to only affect the sheeted particles or the birth particles. So let's go to our modifiers uh, menu and we'll bring in a turbulence. Let's just set that scale down to say 40, maybe 30%, strength up to 15. And I'll go to the groups affected tab and let's just affect the birth particles, the green ones. We'll drop that in. So now let's see what happens. The turbulence is affecting those green ones and it's making them move much more erratically. But the sheet of particles aren't affected by that turbulence. They're still filling in those gaps as they would. And as a result, we're getting this really nice, erratic, detailed tendril-like splash scene that's looking really, really interesting. So the final stage, obviously, we need to mesh these particles to create the thing that we're able to render. So let's go to our generators. We'll bring in an X particles open VDB mesher, and this requires a source. Let's just mesh all of those particles. So I'll drag in our emitter. There we get our mesh looking a little bit blobby, of course. So we need to reduce our point radius. Let's set this down to say two. And that mesh has disappeared because we need to reduce the voxel size let's put that down to one and there we go we've got a nice mesh it's looking a little bit blobby so we'll go to filters let's add some filtering I'll get rid of that median and we'll bring in a Gaussian there we go and we could even um, let's just take the expansion of that off we'll use an offset which will offset that slightly give us a little bit more detail I'll make the particles invisible and there is our final fine mesh which is really thin with fantastic sheeting and you can see on the edges of this simulation we've got these really nice surface tension blobs which give us that added bit of realism so that is the x particles sheeter and x particles splash fantastic for those product shots and visual effects scenes so really exciting stuff. If your maintenance has lapsed, now is the time to renew so you get this update when it comes out very soon.